Greetings, welcome back and all that. In the last video, we playtested our level to see what was working, get an idea of what wasn't, and make a plan for changing things. Now, I'm not going to actually do this, but if you want to try it, you can. It is possible to split up your game and your scene views. For instance, you can take the game view, which is what we've been looking at every time we hit play, and you could uh, split that, just grab the tab for it and drag it, say, over here, and now we can see them both at the same time. If you wanted to be really fancy, you could hit play, and then over here you'll see we can still move around and see how things look. Then we can move over to the scene view whenever we want and still navigate it and still do things, if that suits us. You can even still sculpt on your terrain. Now sculpting terrain, changing its shape, is one of those things, one of those few things, that will be maintained after you stop playing. So if you want to do that, you can. Just don't paint around where your character is because he'll fall through the world and you'll have to start all over again anyway. Only reason I bring that up is that, well, one, it's kind of cool. It's more novel than it is anything else. But if you want to paint something and you're really far away, like you've got like a four kilometer level, you could paint it, already be in the area, and then just, you know, drag it over. Or you can grab your character and move him over while the scene's playing. There's all, all kinds of ways to make that work for you if you like that kind of workflow. That's not how I'm going to be editing, but it's one, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. So let's stop playing. I'm going to take my game tab that I, I broke off a second ago. And if I drag it right over here to the scene tab, I can put it... Oh, I missed, because I was talking when I said it. I can put it right back over here where it was. Actually, let's get it docked first. Go ahead and close it. Sometimes the editor will mess up, so you can go ahead and close it. Yeah. And then go ahead in the drop-down. No, nope. the drop-down right here next to the inspector. Add tab. You're going to add a game tab back. And look at Lee totally having my back the whole time. I actually haven't done that one yet. Uh, usually when I'm dragging stuff around, things dock just fine. And then if I ever have a problem docking, I usually end up closing it and bringing it in a, a slightly different way. But that's really nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is just do all of my editing right here in the scene view. So let's start off with this first problem, which is that our campground was... To me, it felt way too big. Well, it is a campground. You could actually have about 20 different campsites yeah, in that exactly. campground. Exactly. I, I wanted something that felt a little cozier. Right. So uh, let's go ahead and select our terrain, which I just clicked on the land uh, form itself. If that's uh, not working for you, of course, you can just select it here in the hierarchy panel. And we will hit Shift-Q to grab our raise and lower terrain tool. Of course, you can also also click it here inside the inspector, and my brush is way too big, so let's bring the brush down. I do want to throw this out there. If you have gotten completely away from the selection, like if you select some other object in the hierarchy panel, and then you come back and try to get to these tools again, the brush settings will have reset. So don't think, oh, well, I set this to a, the perfect setting so that now I can play with the first-person controller, I can change the direction of light, and then jump right back in and keep right on brushing. No, you need to remember your settings and tweak them. And on that note, another thing that um, you have to be aware of is if you are clicking and dragging on stuff mm -hmm. and then you accidentally select on the terrain, it will bring up one of the tools, and you could accidentally start modifying your terrain without realizing you're doing it. Yeah, so be really careful about what you have selected. Now, you can see here, what I've done is I've just kind of pulled back a little bit with the camera, and I'm just kind of tightening up the area where our camp actually exists. I'm building up all around it. Now, as soon as I'm done with that, I can switch over to the Smooth tool, which, as a reminder, once again, that would be Shift-E and we can smooth out the irregularities that make it actually look like brush strokes. And what I recommend you do is just get a little bit of this in and then immediately hit play and see how this feels. So it's obviously a whole lot tighter. We can't really climb up either side. It's a little too steep and I'm okay with that. I, I like that idea. I think I might sharpen up those uh, edges just a little bit. I don't know, it's kind of hard to say. Now, I believe we built the campsite here at an altitude of 10. Uh, so we could grab our set height tool once again. We could pull this down to a value of 10 directly, or just delete everything out and punch in 10. 
Now, my brush is huge, so let's make the brush much smaller. And I suppose it would have helped if I'd remembered that these brushes are measured in, in meters. Now, let's just hit play there and see how that kind of feels. So we've got our little cove. Now, that these sharp angles, I'm really not a fan of. And again, a lot of that has to do with the resolution of our terrain surface. So if you knew you needed that kind of sharpness there, but you, you, know, you absolutely can't have uh, those big jaggedy polygons sticking out, then you would want to raise the overall resolution of your terrain. Right. It's actually going to be a trade-off with what you're publishing as far as your specs on your platform end platform another trick is if you absolutely can't raise the resolution on your terrain then you can always use a trick of hiding it with meshes later in your game design exactly uh, we could cover this up with boulders later on if we wanted to or all kinds of different things that we could be bringing in from external uh, applications such as Maya or 3ds max uh, what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna take uh, now notice when I hit play and stopped all of my brush settings reset be aware of that so that you don't accidentally you know drop down a stroke with a, a gigantic brush like this and do something terrible to your terrain so I'll undo that uh, we're gonna switch over to the smooth tool bring the brush size way down bring the opacity way way down and then we can just kinda clean up those nasty polygons right in there and this is a lot closer to what I had in mind. It's something that, yeah, it's still pretty spacious. If I was going camping, I would call this a pretty spacious place to put my tent and whatnot. Uh, but it's a lot cozier than it was. It doesn't look like the kind of place where you could have, like, you know, eight different campsites and the RV pulls in and then, you know, somebody brings the portable jacuzzi, which would be awesome. Uh, but no. So we'll stop playing. Now the next thing, we just kind of move out from here, is this really hard cut ravine which is really not working. We saw that it was really kind of messing up the player's progress. So with my smooth tool, let's go ahead and bring the brush size back down, this time to something around 14. We'll just really start smoothing that out. And that pulled a lot of that up. Uh, I'm also going to make sure that the player doesn't re immediately think that they can just go right over here, right into the hot spring area. So let's grab the raise and lower tool. We'll increase the brush size pretty significantly. Oh, and I'll put a much lower opacity. So if you see something come up and then immediately disappear like that, that's because I have reflexively hit Control Z because my brain said no. And uh, for me, hitting Control Z, it, it is like a reflex. I'm like quick draw McGraw on that. So uh, that's all I'm doing. So let's pull this down, and I'm going to build this up fairly gradually. And we discussed earlier that our quote unquote hot spring was more, it was kind of like getting into the realm of Lake Tahoe. Uh, so we're going to. Bring this up a little bit as well, and really, actually, what I'm going to do is pull a lot of this up, and then we can always flatten it back out later and kind of redefine the size. What I'm more interested in right now is making sure that the player doesn't accidentally jump over there and create some more obvious division between those two areas. Now, our path we had envisioned coming this way and then branching off in kind of a T intersection. So up here in front of this intersection, I'm going to raise all of this up. I don't want it to be particularly steep. I'm just thinking kind of a hill into which we could sink some trees and make it look like a little bit of a foresty area. Now, over here, if we turn to the left and head out toward the mine area, we have this ravine. Now, I don't really know how I feel about this ravine. We could fill it with rocks or something, but my problem with doing that is that the rocks won't by default look like they're covered in snow. Uh, so we could just eat that and just go, you know, that's kind of how it is. Or we could start filling it in and turn it into a, a raised hill-like area. Kind of like a, a second tier that we can put some trees on as we walk over. And I think I actually like that idea a little better. So we'll build a lot of this up. Now, these are areas that the player could explore over in here, which is okay. Now, let me get my smooth tool back out. And I'm going to get rid of some of these irregularities where we had our our set height for the pond. And now let's redefine where our little hot spring area is. So I'll just get the raise lower terrain tool. And let's see, let's bring down the brush size, something really small. Hold down shift, and we'll just paint this down. You'll see right about here we're actually hitting the rock bottom once again. We're back at zero. Uh, what if we just did something like that? I mean, that's really tiny. I still want to have it big enough where I could put some rocks around the outside of it. Well, it's actually kind of spacious. If you look at that area compared to the campsite yeah, that you've done. It is bigger than the campsite, and that's good. Now, 
I, w- I do want to mention this. I just reached up while Lee was talking, and I shouldn't ever do this. I should let you talk, and then I should say what I'm doing, because that's good presentation. But I did kind of just jump the gun and hit play, and I want to go over and see the size of this hot spring. And, you know, it's like, oh, now I have to journey all the way across this tremendous terrain. There's a couple of different alternatives we could do. Uh, one is you could just grab your first-person controller and press W to get your move tool out and just move it over here. Now when we hit play, we're way up in the air, but that's okay. We'll fall into place. And now we can see about the size of the spring. I think I'll make it a little bit wider than this overall, but, I mean, we're close. Mm. We're pretty much right where I want to be. Make a little bit more room for the rocks. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So let's come back over here to the terrain. And we'll grab our raise lower. And, of course, we've moved away from the entire object altogether, so we have to reset our brush settings once again. And we'll just push this out a little bit in its overall width. And I'm going to take the edges of it and smooth them very slightly. Just so in paint texture mode. I'm in paint texture mode, so don't tell anybody you saw me do that. And uh, we'll just paint out some of those little jaggies there. And then hit play once again. And that's a lot closer to what I had in mind. I think we can definitely make that work for us. Okay, now one more thing I want to throw out there. If, you, if you're doing a lot of testing and you're jumping back and forth and you're just like, oh, it just takes me forever to get around my terrain. One, that's kind of how it goes uh, in a lot of cases if you're really trying to explore. But don't be afraid to make use of the settings that come along with your first-person controller. I'm not going to dive too far into all these, but if you come into your hierarchy panel and select your first-person controller... You'll notice that there are some settings that just kind of come along with this that we can utilize. Uh, we have, actually, if we come over, oh, he has a different first-person control. What's under the motor movement? Under, oh, I, I, I know where I am. Sorry, I'm used to having all of this expanded already for me. So our max forward speed is uh, currently set to 6, and sideways and backwards is all set to 6 as well. What I'm going to do is set all this stuff up to, we could just double it and set it to 12, but why would we stop there? <laughs> Let's crank it up to 20s down the board. I'm sorry, I had a total brain lock for a minute and I forgot where I was. So now we've got all these set to 20. Let's go ahead and hit play one more time. And now, if we want to get around, it's a whole lot quicker. Now, because of the nature of this controller, it does kind of feel like you're hovering a little bit. So uh, if we're moving toward an area and we let off the control, you'll slide for a little and changing your direction becomes a little interesting. So if we come to our little T-intersection and immediately turn, we're going to slide sideways for a minute. But you get used to it, and it does become a much quicker way to get from one spot on the map to another. It's become a hovercraft controller. Exactly. It's kind of fun. Now, we didn't do anything to the kind of mine area up here. The only thing I kind of want to do is encase this area in this little flattened spot over here. I think I'll raise just a little bit higher, and that's really more personal preference than it is anything else. So the brush size is probably good. We'll just decrease the opacity. You're oh, I'm still in smooth. I saw it before you said it. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying. Cut a guy a little slack, okay? I could. <laughs> I, I know. I wanted but, to. But, exactly. You know, but what's so hard? But what's the fun in that anyway? So we'll raise this up and, you know, just really more, not to, to lock the player off, because I'm sure they could probably climb right up that, but really just a way to focus their attention as they come up out of that valley. Now, let's grab smooth, and we'll kind of smooth out the trail a little bit. Now, again, I'm starting to go really natural on the uh, the navigation. So once again, I'm just holding down Alt, left dragging to rotate, middle mouse dragging to pan, and then right mouse to zoom in and out. Please get used to that. Now, after a while, it becomes second nature. You don't even think about it anymore. And that's really the spot I want you all to be in while you're doing this stuff. So let's kind of raise this up a little bit so the, the, the change in, in direction becomes a little more apparent. You can pull this up a little so we don't have so much of a little crevice hiding back here. And I think with that, we've got pretty much everything I want. We've still got kind of a little secret area back here behind our campsite. And I mean, if you wanted to fill that in or put something special back there, then I mean, of course you could. But I think we're pretty much to a point where I want us to be. So what I'm going to do is hit play one more time with our super fast first person controller and our campsite. It's still pretty spacious, but I think that's going to work for us. And we're going to actually the hot spring. 
Is it, yeah, oh yeah, we moved to the hot spring. You're right. See, I don't even know where I am anymore. That's okay. So here's our campsite, which is actually a lot cozier than the hot spring, and that should work out really well. And then come down our little path... And the the turn will be a lot more obvious when we have texture, but it's better than it was. And now this kind of, you'll see that we have these kind of raised areas to the left and right, which really sort of drive our focus right into where this opens up into the, the mine area. And there we are. So that, I think, wraps up all of the editing that I wanted to do. So that's also going to wrap up this video, unless there's anything else you want to throw out. No, that's... Good. Okay, so before we call it, the last few things I will do, I'll close up character controllers because we don't really need that anymore. I am going to leave my first-person controller set to uh, super speedy mode for now. Uh, later on, we may slow it back down, but for testing purposes, it is nice to get from one place to another really quickly. Also, I'm just going to throw this out, even though this is more of a design, kind of just thinking about game uh, creation topic. The slower your character moves, the larger your game is going to feel. And uh, that's something, I know we're, we talk a lot about the upcoming MMO class that's going to be available for member sponsors on 3D Buzz, but the what uh, kind of brings this to mind, one, a really good example is I'm a World of Warcraft player. And even if you haven't played Warcraft, you just you know, as long as you're familiar with the concept, you know that there is a game called World of Warcraft, and it has a great big environment. When you first start playing, you're just a character who can run around. And then later on, you eventually get a mount that you can ride around on, and because you can move faster, the whole world feels a little smaller. And then as you get a flying mount, which moves even faster, and the whole world feels smaller yet. It's just like when you were a kid. You know, walking to your next-door neighbor's house took forever, and then later on, you get to the point where you can drive, and suddenly, you, you know, you take an hour drive, and you don't think anything of it. Exact same effect here. So think about the speed at which your player can move. I don't know why I got off on that tangent. It just seemed important at the time. But uh, that will wrap everything up for this video, so uh, be sure to save your scene, hit Control-S if you haven't already. I'm going to close up all of my folders, and that will wrap things up for us.